This morning, I want to speak to you about a topic called Called by God. Called by God. Did you know God has a calling for each one of us? He has a calling for you. And God calls people. And he has a purpose for their life. Your purpose in your life isn't just to see if you can eat a proper amount of food or if you can do certain kinds of exercises your purpose in life is to do the will of God. And you see it in Matthew chapter 20 in the 16th verse. It puts it this way. Many are called, but few are chosen. Called and chosen. Well, what's the difference then between being called and being chosen by God to do it? See, when God has something for us to do, often we then have choices as to what we're going to do in our life. And they will determine whether that calling is really released in you and through you. And God often gives to us a chance. But what we're called to do becomes very, very significant 
because we're tested to see if we're really ready to do it. Now you see this with Jonah. I mean, he was called to do something, go to Nineveh. And he was called to go to a very evil city, but anointed by God to change the lives of people. But Jonah didn't want to go there. Have you ever had some place where you don't want to go? He didn't want to go there. And so he ran away in another direction, went out on a boat and ended up going into the water and a big fish swallowed him. And for three days, he was in the belly of a fish. I can't believe what it would be like to be in the belly of a big fish in an ocean for three days. This all happened after he was called. But then you had to come to the point of what you did and that would affect whether or not you're chosen. See, in your calling, when you're called, you have to submit to the will of God. When you're called, you need to be a person who worships him. And when you fail, you have to repent of your failures. Jonah did. And then when you're called to do things, God may call you then to bless other people and help them in their time of need. I had that happen to me here on Friday morning where I was out walking and the Lord spoke to me about helping somebody and then there was a person in need. I had the choice to either do something with what was in my pocket for myself or do it for somebody else. You're called then what's your choice? Do you follow in your calling of what God wants you to do? And do you then respond to him and submit to him? You just don't want to be in a mindset where, well, you want to adjust the calling of God so it fits you. You want to adjust the calling of God so that you go where you want to go or do what you want to do. You want to do what God wants you to do. And he wants you to forgive other people. And he has a place he wants you to do something for him. Now in this world in which we live today, right now there are things that God wants you to do, places he wants you to step forward in faith and say, yes, I will do this for the Lord. Yes, I will go there for the Lord. Yes, I will respond to him. And I will go to Nineveh, and I don't want to end up in the fish's belly. Now God, it tells us in Jonah 1 and 17, prepared a great fish for Jonah, like he had a fish that was all ready to eat him and all ready to keep him inside of him for three days. God had prepared him. So in your journey of faith, there may be things along that journey where it goes for you between being called and being chosen, where God has things that are prepared to help you make the right choices and for you to get through it and then do what God wants you to do. It so often is the case that we have the choice of doing the will of God or getting diverted by the enemy so that the will of God isn't done and the will of God gets sidelined. So we have to submit to the call of God. I know in this church right now, there are all kinds of people. God has called you to do something to help other people or called you to do something to bring a ministry into the lives of people. It might be someone you're to call or to visit. It might be something you're to do you have the choice of will I submit to the will of God and hold firm and steady in it? Or will I get distracted and end up just going down another path to fulfill kind of desires of my own personal heart rather than God's purpose for you? So God wants us all to move forward in faith and to serve him not serve ourselves, not get just what we want, serve him. And God has choices for your life. You can be sure of this. 
when you choose to will of the, do the will of God, you will have a sense of the presence and peace of God in your heart. When you do his will, that peace will settle and he will give you the strength needed to do his will and an anointing over you. And the anointing will allow things to flow through you which will change the lives of other people. Now the other thing you know for sure is that the enemy doesn't want the will of God done through you. So there'll be diversions that are sent and distractions that are sent and likely in some cases there'll be things that you like that he sends along because he knows that you like them and he knows they'll be hard for you to say no to. And Satan tries to distract us from the will of God. He tries to put something else in our hearts and rob and steal from us what God has for you today. Today. You see it all through the Bible where people would get tempted and distracted by things. And they have a choice to make. But we must make the choice to submit to the will of God. Where we go and what we do and how we live, we have a choice to submit to his will. And then we see the anointing of God flow in us and through us. And we see how we can connect with what God has in his plan for us. It might not have been what we thought we would have when we were young. It might be something that really stretches us. If he takes us to some place and you don't feel comfortable there, you need his peace. I've thought a lot lately about are there places in the world that I'd like to go for a visit and see. And then I've thought, are there places in the world that I've been and I have no desire to go back to them again? You know what? There are places I just have no desire to go to at all. And it's often because in that place, at one point when I was there, I knew that God was not moving in me or through me. I knew that it wasn't a place where I wanted to be. When we watch God at work in us and through us, we know that God is there and his presence is there and his peace is there and his love is there and he's with us. You may be called by God to go to a very tough place, but when you get there, you may know that you know that you know that God has called you and he gives you his peace and he walks with you through it. Don't let Satan throw you off. See what God has called you to do. It may be some way you're to serve God to Christians or maybe in some kind of ministry in the church or maybe he wants you to do something for them. You know what? Your calling of God may to be give someone a cup of cold water in the name of the Lord. And when you do it, you have peace. And when you do it, you know that God is in it. Don't let certain Satan's diversions throw you off the path that God has for you in your life. Make sure that your life is focused on the will and the path that God has for you and you have peace. Make sure that you have people who love God, who are with you and praying with you and going in faith with you in what God has for you. And so you'll see God's provision and you'll see God's deliverance and you'll see people's lives changed by the power of God. You'll see people who God has made a difference in their lives and he uses you in the process to help them. And one day after we've lived all our lives, we will know that we go home to heaven. And when we go home to heaven, we will hear what really matters about how we lived here on earth. I'm looking forward to hearing the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in. I mean, do you think about it? Enter in the joy of your reward in heaven. 
Enter into heaven. Enter into the place where God is, where there's no sin. Enter into the place that God's prepared for you, for me. I look forward to going to heaven. I look forward to being the place where God is and has prepared for me. Now, what I want to make sure that I try and do on earth are the things that are the will of God for me to do. What I want to make sure is that I'm willing to walk away from the diversions that Satan would try to bring across my path that would get me off on some other path that God has not got for me. Satan has it. You always have these two choices, either the will of God or the will of Satan. And then sometimes people make the choice, I want to make the will of self and what I want is the most important thing. You don't want that. What you want is the will of God. So choose God and choose to deny the things that would throw you off and to hear from God the things that matter to him so that you can hear those words, well done thou good and faithful servant. God wants you to be a good and faithful servant while you're here on earth. So ask yourself this question. What does God want me to do? What does he want me to do? I know this. When I was younger, God wanted me to raise two sons with faith in him. He called me to do that. He wanted me to pray for some people and see the miraculous power of God heal them in their lives. And I saw it. He wanted me to speak words of truth and people come to Christ and invite them to be their savior. And I saw it happen. He wanted me to be supportive prayerfully and financially to some people where he called them into very desperate places in the world and they've gone as missionaries. Oh, what a joy it brings me to know that I have stood behind some of those missionaries. And some of those missionaries that he sent has seen many people come to Christ. He wants me to do a whole bunch of things and he wants you to do a whole bunch of things. And when you do them the way he wants, you'll hear the words, well done thou good and faithful servant. When it's time for you to enter in because you have lived the kind of life that he wants you to live on earth, he has prepared a place for you in heaven. I don't know just exactly what my place in heaven is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be one floor or two floors. I don't know if I'm going to have stairs or an elevator. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know so many things about heaven I don't know. But I know this, that when I get there, it's going to be the most joyful thing I've ever experienced. It's going to bring me joy and peace. And I'm going to see Jesus, my Savior, the one who did for me what he did, went to the cross, died on the cross, shed his blood, and he did it so I could be saved. Now, I'm not perfect. I don't know anybody that's perfect. I don't, there's nobody that's perfect. And when we fail, God forgives. We ask him. And he prepares a place for us in heaven when we love him and invite Jesus to be our savior. So just make sure that in your life, what God calls you to do, have you defined what God has called you to do? What God calls you to do, he will empower you to see it happen. He will give you the supernatural power of God to flow through you so that supernatural things can happen around you, done by God through you. And you'll make a difference in the lives of people. You'll see their lives changed because of the power of God. Be a servant of God. Be a servant of God who's called by God. And be one who many are called, but be the next step. Few are chosen. Be the one that God chooses to do things for him and spend your eternity with him in heaven. 
God doesn't want any of us just to sit back and do nothing. I mean, it might be something very simple, a cup of cold water in the name of our Lord. Or it might be something that's very supernatural, miraculous healings that come. Whatever it is that God wants for you to be part of, open your heart to him and ask him to flow in you and through you to do his will. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have a will for each one of us here on earth. You have a purpose why we're here, and you have something that you want us to do. Help us in our lives to focus first on what you want us to do. Help us to ask you to forgive us when we fail and to move forward in faith. We worship you, Lord Jesus, and as we worship you, may your spirit flow through us. When we fail, forgive us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.